Okay, welcome to another photographic moment. And um, I'm actually out in one of my favorite locations. And yes, it's raining, but that's good because it's one of the things I want to talk about. Uh, in nature and landscape photography, it's very important uh, for the photographer to know uh, their subject. And uh, for today's shoot, I'm out at my all-time favorite subjects. It's Hocking Hill State Park. Um, had a lot of rain last night. So we've got the water flowing really good. Uh, Cedar Falls is uh, flowing more, uh, probably the most water I've seen come through there at this time of year since 2003. So um, why am I shooting in the rain? Because uh, when everybody goes inside, it's not sunny out. That's a perfect time for the nature of landscape photographer to come out. Um, with bright sunny skies, we tend to get these blown out hot spots, especially when we're shooting in a landscape uh, condition such as this, uh, along with these uh, dark shadows. So uh, very contrasting images result. It's not pleasing. So it's worth getting a little bit wet to go out because the light is nice and even. Um, the little bit of wetness on the green and the rocks tends to saturate the colors really well. So I talk a little bit about shooting in the rain in these kind of conditions. Uh, if you notice, this is my waterproof casing. It's a hotel shower cap. It was free. You don't need to spend a ton of money buying uh, waterproof casings for your 35mm camera. I really don't even need this because I'm shooting with a Canon 1D Mark III. It's a professional grade camera that's built for shoot photographers who shoot in difficult conditions. They shoot outdoors, they do a lot of dust, a lot of rain. So it's actually water resistant due to the rubber sealants that are built into the camera. Regardless, I still, once in a while, when it rains too much, I throw on my, um, my uh, a shower, a plastic shower cap from the hotel and it helps keep the camera dry. It works. Um, Everything's great. What I'm shooting today is uh, going downstream, uh, a little bit of water trickling down there. I want to get kind of the cotton candy effect, so I'm going to do some time exposures. What I'm also doing is shooting in HD, a high, high dynamic range. What this does is provides a uh, more tones within the image, to, image uh, to come out. It's not digitally adding anything that's not already there. It's enhancing what is there. Um, it's more than what just a single frame can pick up. So I'm going to shoot three exposures. I'm going to shoot one, uh, two stops under exposure. Uh, the middle uh, exposure uh, will be dead on, and the third exposure will be two stops over. I merge those together in a program called Photomatic. So what that does is it brings out the tonal range all the way from the darkest exposure to the lightest exposure and combines them all together without blowing out highlights, without darkening shadows. It brings out a lot more detail and color tones uh, that you normally would not see if I just did a single exposure. Shooting with a 1D Mark III, Bogan tripod, a uh, Kirk ball head, a uh, very sturdy, sturdy ball head is, is almost a requirement uh, for doing good landscape photography, especially time exposures. I have a Kirk L bracket, which lets me take the camera I can shoot vertical when I want to go horizontal, slide it out, and horizontal. Okay. Uh, another thing, Canon cable release, so I'm not touching the camera, there's no shape. I'm doing a mirror lockup setting within the camera, so when I do the exposure, I first press the button down, the mirror locks up, press it further down, the exposure is taken. So there's no shape from the mirror locking up. There's always a little bit potential for that. Uh, shooting with a 17 to 35 millimeter uh, wide angle zoom. It's one of my favorite lenses for landscapes. Um, I'm also shooting with a circular polarizer. Uh, I don't do a lot of filters, but the one filter I do do uh, to use as a circular polarizer, um, a lot of people use them because it makes the sky all a little dark blue. Sometimes it looks almost unnatural. What I like to do is use a circular polarizer, uh, polarizing filter on the front of the lens because what that does is takes takes off all that shine off the rocks and off the leaves and makes the um, uh, the tones nice and smooth and almost it makes the color uh, in the landscape more saturated. Uh, just that little added touch to make a big difference. So I'm going to go ahead and take three exposures for my HDR shot on the screen here. I 
adjust my polarizer. Get the reflection off. I'm going to do uh, first exposure, two stops under. Okay. Middle exposure, right where it should be. The longer exposures because I'm uh, shooting at the lowest ISO setting as possible. Uh, the slowest, uh, what's used to be called film speed. This is uh, would be ISO 50. What that lets me do is uh, gather in more detail. There's uh, least amount of digital noise. Um, it really works the best, but you only can do it with long exposures in a dark setting like this with a tripod. Okay. And two stops over. Okay, and while that exposure is going, because I think that's probably going to be like 30 seconds. Um, talk a little bit more about where I'm shooting. This is my favorite location. I've been coming out here and photographing in Hockey Hills. Um, Oh gosh, since 1980, um, I've lived out west. I've photographed uh, throughout the United States, a lot of beautiful locations, a lot of the major national parks. But this is my personal favorite uh, because I have a lot of emotional attachment here. Uh, it was a place I first came to uh, when I was just getting started in nature and landscape photography back when I was, I don't know, 13 or 14 years old. And now I'm bringing my own daughters out here, and now they're starting to do it too. So it's, it's, it's really neat. Um, it's a beautiful part of Ohio. It's uh, sandstone gorges, waterfalls. Um, these hemlock uh, forests are just beautiful. Uh, right now, spring is just kicking in, so we've got a lot of good wildflowers, uh, trillium, uh, trout lilies, uh, Virginia bluebells. I'll show a few of those pictures, too, at the end of this video. Uh, now what I'm going to do is go upstream to Cedar Falls, which is just flowing incredibly well. And I'm going to get some nice exposures up there. Uh, the reason I didn't film up there is because it's, it's flowing so good, you won't be able to hear my voice. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, get back to photographing in my all-time favorite location, doing what I love to do. And I hope, hopefully I'll have some really good images to put, uh, put at the end of this video for everybody to see. And uh, until then, I'll see you at the next photographic moment. Thanks.